Rocket Squad. It's your boy Roman Aka Mr. Enemy 343 and today I wanted to talk to you guys about Ruby and I know I've been very vocal about this show but I've been avoiding this topic like the plague because you know A we've actually had a lot of like you know fanboys come out of the woodwork trying to say that oh I actually am gonna be talking about Ruby how could I actually say something like this well be I know I shouldn't actually be hating on something because I used to actually like uh, freaking Ruby at one point but after that it just went straight downhill it's mostly due to the fact that we've been seeing the creation of what was once the brainchild of the late great Monty Oom um, may God rest his soul but how I actually see this is just you know absolute travesty and it's become more and more of a travesty due to poor writing and not having the show reach its full potential just like what H bomber guy said in his video and I'm gonna be linking his video down in the description and it seems that after Monty's passing, and I know that a lot of people are going to hate me for actually mentioning Monty in this video a lot, but your guys are going to have to freaking put up with it. Simply put as that. Rooster Teeth took the show and just used it to make an example of what not to do with the work of art. By injecting politics by actually doing a whole bunch of crap that nobody wants to actually have in their entertainment. Yada yada yada. Especially if someone lays down a roadmap of where the series goes. Especially with like, you know, how it's actually going to be set a certain way. Look, we've actually seen abominations actually happen. Don't even get me started on the live action Cowboy Bebop because... God forbid, that was an absolute travesty, and they didn't even follow a freaking roadmap or even follow the source material. But it seems that the map was to torn up and thrown out the window, like it usually does. And it started getting bad after about fo uh, volume 5, because volume 4, in my personal opinion, was kind of meh. It just didn't have the heart or the soul of the series. But don't, even, but don't even get me started on the shippers either. I mean, I got nothing against Bumblebee, a.k.a. Blake and, Blake and Yang. Trust me. I actually really thought there was potential for that uh, freaking ship, but... It's just kind of rushed. I mean, where's the trust that, you know, in the freaking bond that actually built between Blake and Yang? Heck, Monty was actually putting in hints of the Bumblebee ship from the series, and he wanted the relationship to properly blossom into something beautiful. But yet, yeah, it didn't blossom. It just actually kind of felt forced and contrived. But it seems that this was forced because of the ravenous shippers gnashing their teeth at the chance of destroying a once popular show. Look, I'm going to have to give uh, the fight scenes like the benefit of the doubt, but the characters were just not really living up to their potential. I mean, character development is the key to actually making something good. And quite frankly, I'm just going to say that Ruby Volume 10, I hate to say this, is going to be DOA. It's just not the same show as it used to be. I mean, we're all so obsessed with who... Nowadays, this is just like, you know, how people are. They're actually so obsessed with who's sleeping with who, who identifies as what, and like... You know, we got gender identity, 
sexual orientations, freaking making sure that women come first and people of color as well. That's the world we actually live in. That's what's being forced down our throats and get, quite frankly, we're getting sick of it. Myself included. Why compare, if, why compare, this is actually, you know, a personal gripe I actually have with the show as well. Why compare General Ironwood with the former president of the United States? Look, I have nothing against Trump, okay? Even though I don't really like his rhetoric, you know, I'm not really much of a political person because I avoid politics like the plague because, A, if you're actually going to be talking about politics, you might as well be walking on eggshells. <sighs> you see, people want an escapism. They want to be entertained. They don't want to be lectured on why certain people are bad. Or that, you know, you're being celebrated as, you know, being LGBT. Look, I don't care who you sleep with. That's fine. That's fine with you. But don't force those types of opinions on me as a person. Also, let's talk about Cinder's backstory. She was supposed to be based off of Cinderella, but they really had to fluff her character. I have to say, she actually had potential to actually be a so-called villain, but just making her actually feel make her feel sympathetic towards her. I just don't know about that. I mean, she she could have actually had her full potential. But, you know, but why? Why Why don't you actually try to actually, you know, make her as, like, you know, as the necessary evil of something? Also, when you actually have characters, you need to have flaws for the characters to show that, you know, they should overcome certain obstacles. Or, you know, people that they could trust to actually help conquer those flaws. Or they should actually try actually, you know, taking on those flaws by themselves. You see, flaws are what actually makes a character relatable to us. Because, you see, without flaws, what's the point of having a character? I dread saying this, since this is a very bitter pill for me to swallow, but swallow what I must. Ruby as a series, after Monty's untimely passing, is nothing but a poorly written fanfiction. And the promo for Volume 10 has Ruby talking about mental illness. Where does mental illness actually fit in all of this? Where? Where? What does that hack what does any of that have to do with the show itself? I can't understand mental health issues has to do with Ruby. It's like apples to oranges, guys. Or like comparing a football team to a baseball team, okay? Not in the same ballpark, not in the same league, not even in the same sport. <sighs> and speaking of mental health issues, it seems that people don't want me to mention Monty. Heck, I've been getting a flack from the so-called Ruby community because they don't want me to tell the truth. Well, here I am. This is a bitter pill for you to swallow, but swallow it you must. Because the truth always comes out, no matter what. And there are a lot of so-called Ruby fans that are frothing at the mouth in anger over what I'm currently saying. But they can keep huffing that cup huffing that copium until the cows come home because I am speaking the truth Rooster Teeth screwed over Monty after his death and they tarnished his work after he passed away and they had the audacity to say I'm disrespecting Monty's legacy no 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 you see 
the company behind Rooster Teeth had done some unspeakable things in the said company, abusing workers, having some of their founding members like Joel Heyman and Bernie Burns leaving the company as well because, you know, how uh, the certain company actually treats its employees and yet it's starting to become a sinking ship. Heck, I even actually have a message for Silent Joker 45 who also happens to be, happens to show that these toxic fans are the reason why people are actually so obsessed with the show. One second. And here we go. Joker. And here we go. Uh, yo, Mr. A, you looks like you're getting a lot of flack by the Ruby community of your I have no faith for volume 10 video. And this is what, what Hero Hey and Re I believe Rev Devsu have also said about the Ruby community. Rev says Devsu. Anybody who dares mention the name Monchi Ohm is almost guaranteed to get like a storm at the way. But here's the thing about that. Ruby is a part of Monty's legacy and his previous work. I mean, you and I both know that. The legacy that Monty left behind is actually a really good legacy. But Ruby is kind of shitting on that legacy. Like past volume three, like, like volume four onwards. The show does dip in quality in both like animation, visuals, and like storytelling. And even the so, even like the so good called good fights, it's like, yeah, they're good. But however, I still think Monty would be the, would still direct these fights differently in certain ways. And I think to me, the best fight is in volume five, the, the finale fight. That was like a really cool fight when it's just two maidens fighting. That was kind of badass in my opinion but holy shit they need to understand what legacy actually means the legacy that Ruby is leaving behind volume 1 to 3 that's a good legacy right there but 4 onwards this isn't this isn't what I think he would have in mind maybe but that's not the full story like in the end Monty's legacy has a good Monty's own legacy is pretty good up to volume whatever volume for Ruby that you just decide to say, no, that's it, I'm, I'm done. And to that, Joker, I actually say I totally agree. People really need to learn that we're not actually tarnishing Monty's legacy. That was on freaking Rooster Teeth. I mean, they're the ones that actually went ahead and started freaking making all these like horrible changes to the show itself. I mean, seriously. Hold on, I freaking lost my place here on my script. See what I mean? These people who jump onto someone like Bomb Mentality, and heck, even Hero Hey, H Bomber guy, and even Moist Critical have been called out by these toxic fans that keep coming out of the ward work like cockroaches, and will show their true colors. We only care about destroying legacies and not creating something new. And if people still say I'm disrespecting Monty's legacy, nah. -uh. Rooster Teeth is the one that actually disrespected Monty after his death by butchering Ruby and adding all the smut that they threw into the show. Whether it's about politics, making the bad guys weak and incompetent, or making you feel sympathy for the bad guy because of how she was treated, which I actually mentioned about Cinder. There should be room for criticism. But to the toxic fanboys and, and all the other people who said that time and time again, that according to Monty Hoom, if you criticize Ruby, then don't watch it. We actually stopped watching after Volume 4. Because, you see, it just doesn't have the magic touch that freaking Monty had with the show. Heck, it became what, what 
unwatchable after a certain point since the story has just gone right off the rails. And let's just face it. These people are willing to actually cancel someone for wrong thing. Also, there are too many plot holes and missed opportunities to make a character stand out. Also, let's bring up Adam, for instance. Adam Taurus. They actually freaking killed him off. You know, he actually had potential to actually be a great bad guy. But he doesn't actually live up to the hype and expectations of, you know, what cements him to actually being a so-called bad guy. But yet, they actually throw him, throw him aside... To actually freaking make room for, like, the Blake and Yang relationship. That's why they actually had him killed off. Plus, there are too many plot holes and missed opportunities to make a character stand out. Also, when did Monty ever say if you criticized his work, then you're attacking him and his friends? Huh? Where? Good luck. I personally doubt that Monty ever said that before he died. Something tells me someone lied to you and fed you a pile of shit and said it was chocolate ice cream. In fact, I respect the me memory of Montiome and all the work he did. But seriously, these toxic fanboys must really be seething because I have, I have a fast show proof that these people are so toxic and willing to defend their precious little show because they had to go and trash on a series that was supposed to be made as a swan song for the man who passed away many years ago. But allow me to say this out of respect. Rest in peace about to you. And thank you for making Rooster Teeth what would have been if you were still around. And if you were still here, I bet you Ruby would have been a better show. And hopefully had the characters reach their full potentials. But I don't really see that happening anytime soon. These people just want to actually freaking push narratives and try to actually say, oh, you're just actually criticizing Ruby because you actually don't like uh, LGBT plus representation. No, no, it's not that. We are just sick and tired of actually having the same freaking thing shoved in our faces for no apparent reason. Well, that's going to do it for me. Let me know what, what your thoughts are down in the comments below. If you guys really enjoyed this, smash the like button. Of course, I know that the Ruby fan fans will be coming will come into my video and dislike bomb me because I'm speaking the truth. But thanks for the feedback and showing how lethally toxic you people are. And also, thank you for the free views as well. Also, subscribe if you're new. Also, personal thanks for getting me to 500 subscribers, even though I'm actually at 501 right now. But let's keep going towards 1,000, because that would be awesome. I would really love to actually see if I can actually hit uh, freaking 1K within the next five years. I really appreciate it. And as always, guys, just remember these four things. Respect the life of fan service, enjoy your fandoms, embrace your degeneracy as long as it's legal. Doesn't hurt you or anyone else. Anime is freedom. Until next time, guys, I'm Mr. Enemy343. God, anime, mecha, beats the waifu, fucking speed.